dismissed. Second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, clerk, call the roll. Dr. Burke? Yes. Councilmember Mitchell? Yes. Dr. Parker? Yes. And Dr. Doc, uh, Chair Mike. Yes. Motion passes. Going through. Uh, and with that, I'd like to uh, welcome uh, Dr. Parker. Thank you for joining us, and uh, nice to see you, sir. Nice to see you also, everyone there. Hello. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. All right. So uh, item number two, the update on current and uh, current and recent projects. Jay, go ahead. Great. Uh, good morning, uh, Dr. Burke and, and foundation board members. Uh, my name is Joe Kagosh, and I'm providing a quick uh, overview of the uh, current and recently funded research projects through the foundation. Uh, if you recall from last time, uh, there were four uh, projects that were funded. Uh, two were funded uh, to uh, Cedar sinai one to UCLA, and one to USC. Uh, at this time, uh, two of the projects have, have been completed. And those are the two projects uh, that, were, um, uh, that were led by Cedar sinai and in addition, one of the projects, uh, the one from uh, USC, is uh, expected to be complete at the end of this month. Uh, the fourth project, uh, which was a UCLA, is uh, scheduled to be completed in May of this year. So they're all, um, all you know, kind of uh, wrapping up uh, with some, you know, very, very interesting, interesting results. Um, some of these studies specifically focused on um, particulate matter exposure uh, using mouse models of uh, brain tumors as well as mouse models of Alzheimer's disease, and they found some specific um, kind of genetic endpoints that they would like to explore further. Um, the, if you recall, there was one epidemiological study, this is the one from USC, uh, that uh, used a large cohort, uh, the multi-ethnic cohort study, uh, and found some uh, preliminary associations uh, that linked um, air, air toxics exposures to brain cancer risk in both men and women. And uh, the, uh, the, the work also looked at ultrafine particles exposure and found an increased risk of brain cancer, specifically among African-American men and women. So, uh, and then finally, the, the, um, uh, the, the, the third uh, cellular uh, toxicology uh, 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 study also uh, found some specific links to, uh, to inflammatory biomarkers, which they would like to explore further. Very good. The reason that I asked Dr. Parker to stay on this committee with us is because he reads everything. So I was in between the admin committee. He was giving me a lecture on what the report said. And he said something that I didn't believe. So he handed me the paper so I could read it. And I read it, and I didn't understand it. So then he took and highlighted the parts that I didn't understand. So even a guy like me could understand it. And in that report he, that he showed me, it said that the uh, air pollution in African American and Asian women uh, 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 have an increase. Uh, susceptibility to uh, breast cancer. Uh, I, 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 it was just, it was beyond, beyond my imagination. So, the next question Dr. Parker asked me was, what are you doing to make this known to the public if, if, we, if our l little research is producing this information? And I looked at him, I said, nothing. And I, I don't think that should have been my answer, but that, that was the truth. So what, what, do, what do we do to make people aware of this? So there's two, I would say, general um, audiences. One is the scientific community, which obviously through the publication of the papers is aware of this work and continues the research. And then the second is the, the general population. And how do we do that is through our communications. And what we try to do is make CARB and 
CAPCOA and NACA, the other uh, air-related agencies, aware of these programs and potential implications. But on something like this, particularly once the health effects of Air Pollution Foundation takes action, we can also put out uh, media uh, notices and press announcements in terms of what this means and how South Coast AQMD is actually behind the funding of a lot of these kind of projects. And one of the comments that I hear a lot, Dr. Burke, is that if it weren't for us doing these kind of projects, they wouldn't get done. And so we do need to get that word out that we're working on those issues through the, through the uh, media and the targets that I just described. Well, I, 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 I agree wholeheartedly. And, uh, uh, you know, when we first started this, uh, the other air districts uh, questioned why we would do this. I mean, you know, I can't tell you the abuse I got uh, by wanting to put money into this. But I, I don't understand how they could not want to know this. Yeah. But I, I'm, I'm really going to talk to Keith Black because he's got to stop writing these reports every time he brings something. It's got got something so scary and you know because I think there's uh, something in there about the 405 isn't it? It's, it's, it says that uh, it's more su uh, acceptable to those that are around the 405 in, in particular. My question itself would be what about the 110? What about the 705? What about Latino uh, Latina women relative to that. I mean, these are very... I, this is the first time that looking at this, I've had people that I've known and people that have been family members that have uh, died from breast cancer, uh, women. And I thought that this was such a interesting kind of pinpointing a specific cause or an irritant that I thought uh, should be really publicized or really a lot more research should be done in that particular area as to now that we know that this is causing this, what can you do, if anything at all, to try to prevent it or to reduce the incidence if the incidence are this high? But I would think that Wayne and our health effects officer should uh, meet with uh, with the people at uh, Cedars and see if there's additional uh, avenue that we need to cover on this because uh, breast cancer is is a horrible disease and it's it's really uh, uh, coming to the <laughs> forefront now of how how devastating it is and how big it is so if we can do anything at all uh, to alleviate this in any manner, I, I'm for that 5,000%. We will reach out to uh, Dr. Black's office and see and report back on what we find. Okay, great. And thanks for Dr. Parker for reading for me. <laughs> I'll keep him around a few more years. <laughs> All right, that's just the uh, receiving file. And thank you for uh, highlighting that, that, that information. Um, item number three, we're going to consider awarding the funding for the continuation of the project. Go ahead. Great. Right. Um, so on this agenda item, there are actually three um, proposed uh, continuation projects, one from each of the uh, each of the researchers uh, that were previously funded, that were funded in the previous round. Uh, the first one, uh, the A, is a proposal from uh, Cedar sinai uh, looking specifically at Alzheimer's disease and really kind of digging in deeper uh, on, this re on this line of research, um, specifically uh, using both mouse models as well as human brain tissue samples from the Cedar sinai Biobank uh, to study 
kind of how the how the uh, disease, how the Alzheimer's disease actually progresses when uh, when you have these mice or brain cells um, that are uh, exposed to uh, exposed to air air pollution. Um, one a particular aim that I wanted to highlight uh, in this proposal was that they were uh, looking to do some preliminary work in designing drug delivery systems. Um, as, you, as you know from Dr. Black's uh, prior, prior research, delivering drugs into the brain is extraordinarily complex. And uh, this, is, this is something that they would like to explore on specific types of drug delivery systems that are related to some of the previous findings uh, uh, on, the on the genetic level. Um, so that's item A. Should I go through all three, A, B, and C? Yes. Okay. Sure. Um, so uh, the the second uh, proposed study uh, is from UCLA, um, and uh, so UCLA. Yes. UCLA. Um, so this this one is uh, a study from uh, Dr. Art Cho, who's a toxicologist. And he's proposing to study, uh, do a human cellular, cellular toxicology study uh, to look at the interaction of volatile organic compounds with, again, specific biomarkers, particularly um, specific uh, proteins that are associated with uh, both coronary heart disease uh, as well as inflammatory processes, which are often linked to the development of cancer. And then the third uh, proposal is a proposal from USC uh, that uh, I think is, is the, the uh, study that uh, Dr. Parker was referring to regarding breast cancer, uh, lo using, looking at the linkages between air pollution and breast cancer, uh, particularly in women in, in Los Angeles County. So in this study, they're actually studying uh, a, a very large cohort of women, and this is the multi-ethnic cohort, so it it specifically, unlike, uh, the, unfortunately, the majority of, um, uh, of these types of studies, uh, the majority of these studies oftentimes uh, pr primarily recruit uh, uh, white women. Um, and this particular study specifically recruited a large number of African American, Japanese American, and Latina women to partake in this study uh, to, so that they can actually look at the specific effects within these racial ethnic groups. And this is a study looking at breast cancer incidence as well as breast cancer survival as related to air pollution. You know, I, 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 I hate to uh, make some of the comments, but on this Alzheimer thing, I don't know if, if, if many of you know, but uh, the Denver Broncos football team, their, their previous owner was a fellow by the name of Pat Boland, who, who was a really good friend of mine. And so when he got Alzheimer's, he had to turn the ownership of the team over to his wife, who was significantly younger than he was. The problem was that she got Alzheimer's at the age of 50. And she's now, he died, and she's now institutionalized. So, I mean, two people in the same family? That, that's just incredible to me, beyond, beyond, we got some real problems here in the health side of this country, and maybe this world. So, you know, I know that we're just a little tiny institution as it relates to uh, the whole overall uh, picture of, of health in the world, but Somebody's got to, got to do something, and this Alzheimer's thing is just beyond devastating. Uh, I, you know, Mr. Astry, I think it's very relevant that if we can, as these studies seem to be indicating, pinpoint that air pollution knocks in the other. POCs themselves that we are, you know, fighting every day at the agency, make a, 
direct connection as these studies themselves are doing, I think we can really get more public support in some of the areas of what you're talking about, having additional funding to reduce those areas, because then we can say we have empirical evidence right now that these things are actually, you know, participate, you know, contributing to an increase in these kind of diseases that people who are really, you know, being affected about it. This is the first time that I know in the last. Unfortunately, I was here back in the 60s before we even had AQMD, uh, these, you know, these agencies. But now we're really beginning to hone in on why are we having so many of these increased Alzheimer's incidents, et cetera? Why are we having so many increases in breast cancer and the regions? They may be directly tremendous. We're looking at increases stuff in a state or a region, but if we go into those states and regions and look at them, are they really occurring, i.e. around the 405s and the 710s and the 110 freeways? I think we could really begin to get the public itself really awakened to that uh, the kinds of things that we're talking about wanting to do and needing to do and putting controls on really a little more supportive of those incidents. Anyway. Hey. In keeping with what Dr. Parker is saying, I think that we ought to go to the legislature with this data and find some legislators who have interests in this kind of issue and get them to put in funding bills. Because this is a natural. If you, if, if, if you have uh, scientific proof that it's an increase in breast cancer, I can't imagine a woman legislator who wouldn't jump all over that. So, you know, we, we, we need to get Mr. Alatori's team hopping on that. I'm sure he will look forward to, he will look forward to it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Let me, just, yeah. let me just say something because we're getting um, you know, some reports back um, and I have to say that because I'm not a scientist in this field, it's difficult to understand all of the um, language that they use. Um, we don't, if you're not in this field, you won't understand it. So if we are going to disseminate this, the results of these studies, I think we should be careful to translate that into layman's language so legislators understand it right. and the regular public understands it. We can kind of, I can kind of get out of it what there is, that if you already have a brain tumor, you already have a, a Alzheimer's, uh, exposure to pollution exacerbates those conditions. And the breast cancer thing, when you're next to a, a major freeway, roadway, that that pollution uh, speeds up. Uh, or causes breast cancer and or causes breast cancer. But, but this, um, these reports need to be put in language that everybody can understand. So that would be important. And um, I don't, I, I agree, I don't think anyone else is doing this kind of research. CARB has a research program that comes before the CARB board every year. This is what they want to study. But I haven't seen studies like this. So it would be different from what CARB is looking at. So I think um, uh, this kind of research is, is really remarkable what the findings are and, and very important work. I'll make the motion to, uh, keep fun to fund these three programs that, were, that are in front of us. I'll second. Is there a public comment? Yes. We have an army coming forward. Yeah. And he wants to speak on... Um, Okay. Um, hi, I'm Harvey Aaron. I'm speaking for myself and for the Public Solar Power Coalition. Uh, there, there's nothing about, about drug-resistant antibiotics and antifungals. 
Uh, in the solar new deal in the 16 plan, we, we have a, we submitted a study by CDC about 10, 15 years ago. It said 30, 40,000 deaths per year. Now that's, that's gone up 10 times, like 300,000 in 20. Premature deaths, 9 million in the 16 plan. It's gone up for them. And uh, we're talking about contributing factors to Alzheimer's, breast cancer, brain brain cancer. So every thousand uh, deaths, premature deaths per year in these other categories uh, increases the value, the solar energy value in reducing cost to society. And these benefits have to be distributed both directly to those that have the disease and in other ways to help facilitate the equitable just transition ASAP. Um, so what we're doing here is, is setting the foundation to increase the, the solar value and, and the, the benefits that can be derived from that and how the discussion should be given on it. Is that you, you raise, if it costs two cents per kilowatt hour, do you value it at two cents, four cents, 10, 20, 30 with the markets coming now? And what do you do with that margin? And where does it go to health costs? Uh, we've got a $25 trillion deficit. Social Security is on its way out. we got to look here. We don't know what's going to happen with the federal government in the future of this country or what's going to happen with climate uh, and our, our divide as a, as a country. And we've got to think about providing for our own here in California and the West Coast, wherever. And uh, the, for, for low and middle income to, to have vertically and horizontally integrated uh, equity and uh, integration, and uh, that needs to, have to be done as, as soon as possible. But this helps establish the, that value. This is real. We've got to know what's real. We also have to know what's real with drug resistant antibiotics. I heard from, uh, from Pedro that folks were concerned about this. I see no action. Let's put action right now here and include studies on drug resistant antibiotics in the waste systems. City of Santa Monica powers 2,000 trucks with drug resistant antibiotics that they get an extra $100 per ton over from a low carbon fuel standards because it comes to 1,000 miles from a, a, a landfill in Texas rather than putting solar electric trucks and hydrogen uh, fuel cells, so solar uh, and, and equitable. And, Thank you. All right. So uh, we have a motion and a second for item number three. Uh, would the clerk go ahead and call the roll? Dr. Kirk. Oh, you guys are muted over there. Hi. There we go. I heard myself just fine. <laughs> we were going to have you blink like Catch Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Parker. Hi. Chairman Lane. Hi. Motion passes. Very good. That brings us to uh, item number four, the June uh, 2018 financial report. You got it. Yes. Uh, good morning, Chairman Benoit and members of the foundation. Good morning, Dr. Parker. Good to see you. Um, this item is to report the results of the financial audit for fiscal year 1819. The foundation was audited by the audit firm of BCA Watson Rice, LLP. And the foundation received an unmodified opinion, which is a clean opinion. And also since inception, the foundation has received approximately $9 million and expended $8.4 million, leaving a balance of approximately $600,000 at the end of, as of the end of December 2019. And of this balance, $500,000 is currently obligated for the research grants that uh, Dr. Gosh just talked about. And at the January 2020 AQMD board meeting, the AQMD board approved a contribution to the foundation in the amount of $3.5 million. Happy to answer any questions. So, so what does that mean the adjusted balance is? So um, Dr. Burke, uh, basically $3.5 million uh, is going to the foundation from AQMD, and uh, there's uh, pretty much 600,000 in cash sitting in the bank, but most of it is spoken for, for the grants that are coming to an end that Dr. Ghosh just described. And then the new project. So what you're saying is 
that the 2.5 million that we approved to move over was to cover obligation 3.5 3.5 was to cover previously obligated obligations no yes. dr Bo. it's one of the new projects dr Bo. i'm trying so you're saying that there's only how much money after we approve all this how much money is left in there five so there'll be about 3.3 .3 million dollars in the foundation for which you can approve the new projects that that's the cost of the new projects the cost of the new projects so the ones that are on today yes yes, yes. If those are approved, then what, what is the balance? Less than two hundred thousand. Then that will be less than two hundred thousand, Doctor Book. Okay. All right. Now, just for for clarification, how long are these projects before we get some reports? Reports back for the results. Right. Yes. So so um, uh, thank thank you. I I I. Accidentally omitted that from my from my report. Um, the the proposal from from Cedars uh, is a three year uh, study, and then the two other proposals are each two year studies. Is when you say they're three year studies, does that mean what we've approved is for the first year or the total three years? That's the total of the three years. Okay. And how often has Cedars committed to? Uh, reporting back to us as to since, since we know now what the cohorts and I hope I'm saying this scientifically correct are going to be are they going to be just horning down on those or are they going to be creating a new cohort in order to study to see your if, meeting if has that, ended oh really <laughs> I'm sorry. Continue, please. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, um, uh, so, so in in the in the previous round, uh, we we actually wrote into the contract that uh, the researchers were to provide progress reports every six months, and so that has been the reporting frequency. Uh, and uh, I think moving forward, we'll we will likely um, put that in the in the new contracts uh, as well. So we will get updates every six months from uh, from each of the researchers. Um, as far as the specific the cohort study from uh, from USC, the one that will be studying uh, breast cancer in women, um, that one it, it is actually an, an ongoing uh, cohort. So they do have so, some uh, data from previous years where they you know already recruited and followed those women and interviewed them. But it is, is actually a continuing study where they are continuing mm -hmm. to do follow-ups with those women to, to identify any changes, any new diagnoses, for example, uh, any, any new risk factors that may have come up since the last time they spoke to them. The reason I say this is because if we're going to be going to the legislature, I think that we're going to have to give them continual information to make them really feel that this is something that needs to be pushed in a more rapid form because the sooner people get the information, the sooner we can do something about it. And if that's the case, then we need to have more frequent input uh, through the, you know, being given to staff so that they can relay it on and uh, we can get as many people as we can behind this. This is the first time in my 40 years of looking at this that I've had someone to specifically state like the 405. Now we've talked about the 705 producing a lot of VOCs and all the other kinds of NOx uh, type of uh, contaminants. But this is the first time that I've seen something that is saying we now know that this is affecting a certain group of people uh, and you know what are we going to really do about it uh, in that regard. Okay. I would say your point is well taken, Dr. Parker. Uh, we have to talk with the researchers and look at the, the value of the reporting period because if it's sooner than six months, they may not be confident enough to sufficiently state what those findings may be. But you raise an excellent point, and we will look into that and come back to this group. Councilman Mitchell, I have a comment. 
Yeah, I, I just want to comment that um, it seems to me that the financial information that I have in front of me right now today uh, is is not not sufficient. And, and Dr. Burke raised this too, like how much money is there? Where is it? What have we spent? I would like to see when you give us a financial um, report uh, more detail. I mean, what is what is in what is in the fund? How much have we spent? And what what has it been spent on? Which when we have three projects, what was spent on each of those projects? And uh, because you have down here the the decrease in restricted net access uh, net, net assets is a million thirty seven, uh, but uh, I don't know where that went. You know, from this report, maybe this isn't the place to put it, but I think the committee needs to know as a whole what's happening here with where the money's going, and then we can better judge um, in the future what what uh, research we want to spend more money on. Maybe we want to spend more money on breast cancer research, or maybe we want to look at Alzheimer's more completely. But I think it'd be good for us to have more of a uh, more detail, more overview of what's actually happening here with with this funding. Is that? possible? Anybody but, else feel that way too? Like we don't I have exactly some numbers there. to say like from inception, if you'd like to know that. Like um, the foundation was given about nine million over the years since inception and uh, Cedar sinai has been granted approximately 6.7 million of that. UCLA's 761,000, uh, 7, and USC about 870,000. So just in a nutshell. But I can elaborate on that in my report. I think that would be useful. I know when, that when this began, we were looking only at the Cedars-Sinai research. So of course, that's yes. where the money went. Yes. And then a couple of years ago, we said, well, let's broaden this out. Let's right. let some other research institutions right. uh, join in on that. So, but I think that kind of breakdown for us would be, would, would be useful. Yes, I can provide that in my next presentation. Very good. Well, you, you know, one of the things that uh, it may be also very helpful to everyone is scientists don't like to do this because I work with a lot of them, don't like to talk about what have they really gathered and determined from this research thus far be, rather than saying it's ongoing. But, you know, listening to Sojourner, we spent $6 million in Alzheimer's. What have we really found out that we didn't know? We didn't spend $6 million in Alzheimer's. Did that's we? what that's, she says with Cedars. And well, I think, no, that started out as, uh, let's, first of all, what Judy said is not really factually correct. Even though Cedars was the lead agency when he started, it included about seven other institutions, including USC, UC Santa, uh, UC Riverside, uh, UCLA, a number of other institutions. So, even though you say that went to uh, uh, Cedars, it really didn't go to Cedars, and it didn't start out as uh, uh, Alzheimer's started out as brain research, as how, how uh, pollution affected the brain. So uh, Cedars didn't get $7 million. They're designated as a recipient of $7 million, but the, the projects probably were diffused among all, uh, a number of other other people, and it certainly wasn't all for Alzheimer's. We just started the Alzheimer thing, to my recollection, about a year or so ago. Is that is that true or false? That's about right, Dr. Burt, because as you pointed out, it originally started out as the Brain and Lung Tumor Foundation, yeah. Yeah. and then we switched over to a general health effects of air pollution so that we could look at broader issues. And Dr. Gosh, as I recall, about three years ago or so, that's when we opened it up and sought those additional solicitations. I think what would be helpful is if we put together a spreadsheet that identified the nature of the projects, maybe a very brief uh, findings of those projects, and then the actual costs. And I think that would answer a lot of the questions here. 
in terms of where the money was invested, the nature of the projects that it was invested in, a very brief summary of what the results uh, were found from those studies, and then we can run a balance in terms of where the remaining funds are, what projects are ongoing, and when we anticipate. But my understanding is that as you consider these projects, the researchers are looking for the full amount of funding before we start so that they can actually move forward. There may be requests for additional funding based on the findings, and that, in fact, has been the case, I believe, with Cedar sinai for their continuation of the ongoing studies. And so we can identify all that, and I'm looking at both Dr. Gosh and Sujata to make sure that we can put that information together and get it to the foundation. Okay. And then I have a question also about do we expect uh, incoming funds in the future? I think the policy was uh, a certain percentage of twenty money is over four million. Four million would come to this <clears throat> to this foundation. Right. To so, the to the Health Effects Research Fund, and then the AQMD board approves how much can go to the foundation. Right. The foundation. Okay. okay. Wait, wait, wait. Say that again. <laughs> um, Dr. Burke, the policy is to have 20% uh, above the 4 million that comes for penalties automatically every That's year. not true. Now, you know, you all can look at each other like you want to. <laughs> but here, here's, what the, here's what was voted on by the board. Now, you, you can say what it is. It was that all the funds over $4 million a year in uh, penalty funds would go to the, the uh, foundation. Now, if that's been changed, which I have a feeling that's what we're leading up to here, without board approval, I need to know that, and the board needs to know that. And Or if you're suggesting a change, I need to know that, and the board needs to know that. Now, I know we've had some problems in, in fulfilling what was this foundation's requirements as it relates to funding from penalty monies, because we probably shifted penalty money somewhere else to cover another hole. But when you say what the board, board, board voted on, it did not vote on 20% of and things over four million. It voted that all proceeds over four million went to this. Now, I don't know how, how it reads in the record, but let me tell you, I was there, I helped formulate it. So, you know, nobody's gonna tell me that it was twenty percent of anything. It so was. So Dr. Bird? I know when it comes to money, you are usually right on. I'm telling you that our understanding is this. Let us look into it, and we'll provide all the information, and we'll do what we need to do. Yeah. Look, if you want to change it, it's up to the board. They can change it anytime they're ready. Yep. But in what was voted on was every all money over four million. Well, Mr. Chair, would, would that be? Uh, and that was never fulfilled. So probably the district owes, if we follow that policy, that's why I keep asking what's in the fund. There's two hundred thousand dollars in the fund. Should be probably eight or nine million dollars in the fund. So that that, but look, as long as we're funding the research and it gets. What uh, what it needs to do, this, uh, Dr. Ghosh's uh, uh, projects. That's the important thing. But okay. Is it flickering on the chart up there? Yeah. And, and look, well, I, I I think it's I think it's essential for since we are different from that of the board as to know exactly what the funding that is going to be anticipated on really is. And because otherwise, we're making decisions here that could be contrary to what it is that the board has authorized this body to do. 
I see our legal beavers now uh, yeah, hovering around. Yeah, we're trying to figure it out right now. Okay. But the uh, minutes from from one of the meetings, as he says that in 2002, the board adopted a policy directing 20% of penalty monies over $4 million would be transferred to the Health Effects Research Fund. That's in your in your packet. I don't have a page number here, but I'm going to see it. This is the draft minutes so, for February 8, 2019. So what I would have to see is the video of that meeting because <laughs> my recollection is anybody could write the minutes and I probably signed the minutes. <laughs> but, but, but the, the understanding that I had with Dr. Wallerstein at the time was that all money's over for me. I don't care. It's okay. If, as long as Dr. Ghosh just gets her money so she can do all the projects that she thinks is appropriate, I'm good. But I don't, I, this is about the second or third time that I've seen some kind of interesting maneuver with the minutes. So, I, you know, minutes are not Bibles. You know, they, they, they don't they don't come from on high, so I, I'll go along with whatever anybody wants. But it's got to be the majority. I wonder maybe it's time to bring it back to the board. If that actually happened in 2008, yeah. that's quite a long time ago. It was a totally different board. Maybe, it, and and we're sitting here confused about what it is. Maybe it should come back to the board uh, for uh, a new look. Well, especially after some of the discussion today of what we're finding, and, and do we want to maybe commit more to this? Or, or, right. Then at least what's I, I agree with that 100%. Okay. Well, I think we've. Uh, because if there's confusion, you need to get it straight. You need to clarify it. Yeah. yeah. So, Dr. Burke, let me just say that uh, we will be more than happy to bring this back if that's a desire. And the point that you made about the funding being there to fund the projects. That's been the main point. The reason that I was uh, so focused on the 20% is because prior to my arrival and in review of this program, the 20% above the $4 million was not allocated to this fund. And we talked to, to, to you and to others about trying to get those funds back. And so Sujata has done... Yeoman's work to make sure that those funds, in fact, have been available. And so we've been keeping a very close track on that item, at least since I've been here, to make sure that the money is there to do the funding. But, but Wayne, but Wayne, wonder if it wasn't 20%. And, you, and, and I agree, so John did a great job in getting the, the 20% back. But if you owe me a dollar and you only pay me 20 cents. Yeah, but I'm going by what I you have in front of me. You know how I feel about that. I do. I, I know you want your money. We'll, we'll go back and <laughs> yeah. find out that, that's what but, yeah. what, what are the amounts? I, I'm just curious. Obviously, I was on the board in the last three or four years, but what, what is the amount per year of penalties? About seven or eight million dollars. So if, go ahead. On average, it's nine million. If we, when we do our budgeting. On the average, it's what? Nine million. On the average, she says it's nine Nine. So that's five million. Twenty percent of, of five million is only a million dollars. That's why I was saying, on general, we go with five million, and the twenty percent is a million. And then we go anything above that, we bring it back to the board. But let's set those figures out for the board to look at. What are the average penalties, and sure. what does it mean? And so, so we're operating all on the same, in the same sphere of facts. Well, and to yeah. make intelligent decisions. We'll bring it all back. Okay. That's, I think that's... And Dr. Ghosh, I hope they don't go to zero. We <laughs> <laughs> recognize how important this work is, that nobody's doing this, and so I think the board would agree with that. All right. So I think that wraps up uh, item number four. <laughs> Maybe it was a lot of item number five as well. Is there any other business uh, for the board? 
Um, our next meeting is scheduled in, but we do also have uh, one more public comment card. Public comment. the end of our public comment here and uh, thank you all for a great meeting we'll go and get on to the next meeting good to see both of you oh wait i remember this <laughs> we concluded uh, have you got time out you can't go harvey <laughs> <laughs>